front of us we can see a wall. It's this wall that led us to find the place here. And we can get a better vantage point of the palace area if we go to that side. When you see the size of the wall, as you can imagine how difficult that must have been for people to try to come and capture the city. And you understand why David would have sent Joab up through the water shaft to get inside. Correct. If you go down, this even go down more to the Kidron Valley over there. And that's why the city was so difficult to take. The city of David is such a great location strategically. You have the military fortifications. He's up high. He's surrounded by mountains. And when you talk about Iron Age cities, they're developing the fortifications. They're developing the fortified cities. You're getting more cities with walls. They're becoming less and less nomadic as a people. You can see a house built into the wall itself. These houses that we found date back to the first temple period. This house belonged to Achael. We know that because it was written in pottery that we found. This man, Achael, was a very important person in the government as well. Firstly, his house is very close to the palace. Secondly, you can see his garage where he parked his donkeys. You can see two <laughs> pillars over there with holes inside the pillars, and that's where he fastened the donkeys. But more than that, we found an ancient toilet. And for people like me in those days, you had to run a little bit further than your house to do certain things. Achiel had he a had toilet. The luxury. He the had luxury. the luxury yeah. of that inside his house. Seeing houses built into the wall itself, we are reminded of the story of David and Bathsheba when it says when the time comes when kings go out and fight, the men has to be out of the city, they have to go and fight, and the women come outside. Bathsheba was taking a bath, and now we can see where he was standing and uh, how this whole story played itself out. Talking about David and Bathsheba is a hard thing to do. When you contrast David with Saul, he's just so starkly different. He's so much closer to God. He's the one described as the man after God's own heart. And then you get this incident where he chooses to take another man's wife to the point that to cover it up, he's willing to send that man into battle and have everyone step back so that he dies. So he has a valid reason to marry this widow so that he can adopt his unborn child. You know, that just seems so out of character for David. But the truth is, it highlights that he was a real man and he made mistakes. In many ways, he's more relatable. He also repented of those things. There were real life consequences. When he was confronted, as opposed to Saul, he repents and he responds. He doesn't make excuses, he takes responsibility. He's such a model for how to respond when your sin catches you and when you're found out. We are reminded of the story when Absalom was chasing his father when he wanted the throne, when he wanted to rule. It says in the Bible that David had to come out with the whole party. He brought the ark out and then he sent it back. And they walked through the valley over there and he went up the Mount of Olives. If you look across from where we're standing in the village over there, in the bedrock, you can see that there are tombs. We know that that was an ancient cemetery. So. What do we put together here? David writes in Psalm 23, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because your rod and your staff, they will protect me. We also spoke about the hills surrounding Jerusalem. Where we're standing, you can see how the hills surround Jerusalem and that he wrote, as the hills surround Jerusalem, so God surrounds his people. Mm -hmm. To the people that question whether there really was a David or a Solomon, you're standing here and you're looking at where they lived and you're looking at where the Bible says so many things took place with great specificity. It talks about the routes they took and the places they were and it's easy to realize that's rooted in reality. What Anna Arena shared about what's going on at the city of David was just fascinating. But a huge part of the United Kingdom story is the temple that David stockpiled for and Solomon ended up building. Is there anything archaeologically that we can see that connects to that? Well, digging's not allowed on the Temple Mount now. However, a number of years ago, an unfortunate event happened, but it opened up some really unique opportunities for us. I'm Craig. And I'm Stu, and we're the founders of Appian Media. 
We really hope that you've enjoyed the content that you've just seen. This was only made available through the generous donations of so many of you. We believe that the world should have biblically accurate, visually engaging content about the Bible, and it should be free for everyone. We would encourage you to visit the membership page of appianmedia.org and consider becoming a reoccurring member. Everything that you donate to Appian Media is tax deductible. However you decide to donate, we really appreciate your support.